Hello, you sexy beast. Has this ever happened to you? Well, fear no more. In the next couple minutes, you learn the skills to pay the bills and become an effective killing machine. Welcome to Blueprints. When trying to destroy an enemy tank, there are a couple of things you have to keep in mind. Modules, crew location and armor thickness are just a few of the factors that play a role in your chance of victory. Let's start off with the modules and crew. To destroy a tank, you need to kill most of its crew. You can do this either by targeting them directly or blowing up a nearby fuel tank or ammo rack. Each crew member has a function. Kill the driver and the tank will be immobilized for a few seconds. Kill the gunner and the enemy won't be able to fire back for a few seconds. Kill the loader and the enemy will take much longer to reload between each shot. Kill the commander and the enemy will have a shorter spotting range as well as suffering from overall worse crew performance. Finally, kill the radio operator and the enemy won't be able to tell his teammates where you are. As with the crew, the tank modules also each serve a purpose, which you can disrupt. A hit to the transmission will render the tank immobilized. Same thing happens when you hit the engine, with the added bonus of having a high probability of causing an engine fire. If you want to stop them from firing back at you, try to destroy the gun barrel or the cannon breach. This is especially useful in one-on-one -on -one battles against heavy tanks from the front, as you can destroy the cannon barrel, preventing them from shooting back at you and allowing to flank around their sides or rear. Another effective way to disable the enemy gun is by preventing it from targeting you at all. Against turreted enemies, destroying the turret ring will jam the gun in place and allow you to flank around. Be aware though, as they can still turn around the whole tank in order to hit you. Lastly, hitting an ammo rack or fuel tank can result in a fire or an explosion, killing the whole crew in a single blow. Whilst being the fastest way of getting a kill on the enemy, it is not the most reliable. Now that we have a deeper understanding of modules and crew, let's talk about armor thickness and angling. Armor thickness is pretty straightforward. If the enemy's armor is thicker than the penetration value of your shell, then you won't penetrate. However, having more penetration than the enemy's armor does not automatically guarantee a successful penetration. Depending on the angle at which your shot is hitting enemy armor, there's a probability it will bounce. The lower the angle, the lower the chance of a successful penetration. Take the Russian T-34 as an example. The all-around sloping of the hull of 45 degrees makes it a very bouncy tank and therefore very hard to kill if you don't know what you are doing. It all depends on your ammo type and penetration. Now, here's the complicated part. There are dozens of different guns and calibers in the game and each of them have different ammo types which do different things. I will explain this more in depth in another episode, but for now, know this. APHE, or Armor Piercing High Explosive Shells, and similar types are what most tanks use as standard ammunition. They are a good all-round shell, providing a balance of penetrating power and destructive power, as they explode once inside and as such have a higher chance of damaging or killing the crew. However, they have problems dealing with angled armor, generally having between a 50 and 60% chance to bounce on a 30 degree angle of attack. High explosive shells are for the most part useless. Whilst technically having the most damaging potential out of all ammunition types, they have close to no penetrating power and as such merely tickle the opposition with only the slightest bit of armor. These are only really viable on high caliber cannons from the Sherman's 105mm howitzer to the KV-2's 152mm howitzer. APCR, also known as armor piercing composite rigid shells, are smaller and lighter than armor piercing high explosive shells and are made of solid metal. They travel faster than any other type of shell and generally have the most penetration. However, they don't explode inside meaning that you are only going to damage what is in the shell's direct flight path. Shooting hundreds of them in the same spot is not going to kill a tank. On top of the high penetration, these shells also suffer less from bouncing. Quick note here, APCR only really works on high ranges on 75mm and up calibers. 
Everything below that tends to have a less penetration than regular IPHE shells on ranges over 500 meters. Heat or high explosive anti tank shells are special. They travel slower and are lighter than other shell types, but don't lose penetration over range. Instead, they explode on impact, sending a stream of molten copper through whatever they hit. At this point, they act pretty much like APCR shells. But these are pretty amazing at setting fuel tanks on fire and making ammo racks explode. Next up, penetration. Watch this clip and see if you can spot the problem. Yes, that was an APHE type shell. Yet it didn't explode. That's because those shells have a fuse, which only activates after penetrating a certain minimum amount of armor. In the clip I've just shown, the enemy tank has less armor than needed to activate the fuse on the shell. This works the other way around too. High explosive and high explosive anti-tank shells both explode on impact, making them useless against spaced armor and obstacles. Even a fence would trigger an explosion. And last but not least, range. Physics dictates that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Yes, I know, maths, blah blah blah. But just stick with me for a minute. The velocity at which the shell travels is at its maximum as it leaves the barrel. Over range, the shell slows down, losing force and therefore penetration. Some shells are affected by this more than others, with the lightest shell slowing down the fastest. Remember that HE and HEAT shells don't lose penetration over range, as their penetrative power does not depend on the velocity of the shell. Faster shells also suffer less from dropping over range, as they reach a the target earlier. As such, high velocity shells like APCR are also more accurate at long ranges. Here's the recap. Against flat armor, sending an APHE type shell into the fighting compartment of the enemy is the best way to take them out. Alternatively, a heat shell into a fuel tank or ammo rack does the job just fine as well. Angled armor may require APCR or heat shells to minimize bouncing. Against heavy tanks and tank destroyers, it might be beneficial to disable their guns before going for the killing blow. If you don't destroy them in a, in a single shot, you might not live to fire off another. And this is it for this video. If you felt like I've left anything out, do express your opinion in the comment section down below. As always, a like and a subscription would be extremely appreciated, but I won't hunt you down if you don't. Yes, yes I will. My name is Michael Zwoom. <laughs> Thank you for watching.